Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Williams Bridgewater. I'm the Special Education Professor in the School of Education. And it's my pleasure to be here to talk about Reflections from Lesson Study 3, which is the lesson study that I presented for our LAIC grant. Now, I'm one of those persons who kind of, kind of tells a story, so what I'm gonna do is take you through my planning process for our lesson study. When we first began talking about uh, the grant, we decided to go with the approach of lesson study. Now, everyone was not familiar with lesson study. I know I was one who was not familiar with it. So we took the time to do what educators do. And we went back and we researched the topic. We did a book club so that we could get familiar with the ins and outs of lesson study. And we, did a, we utilized a book that was written for the college level of working with college level students. And that really opened the door because it gave us that information we needed to understand just what Japanese lesson study is all about. After that, we decided, okay, so what will our topic be? Well, our topic became ethics. So the previous lesson studies, we've had two before mine, which was for lesson study three, where we focused, the first one focused on uh, ethics in children's literature. The second one focused, focused on the Alabama Code of Ethics. And as a special educator, I sat and I thought about what type of ethics would I present, and I thought about the fact that we are governed by the Council for Exceptional Children. All of our textbooks have information from the Council for Exceptional Children, and the Council for Exceptional Children has its own code of ethics, which consists of 12 ethical principles that they put out for all of us in the professional organization and all of our students who are also learning from special education. Although we had 12 uh, codes that we put, we, that we introduced at the lesson study, our focus was on five. And I'm going to, if you don't mind, go ahead and read the five that we focused on just to give you an idea of what we were really putting together in our presentation. The first one is maintaining challenging expectations for individuals with exceptionalities to develop the highest possible learning outcomes and quality of life potential in ways that respect their dignity, culture, language, and background. And as a special educator, that's one that's very important to me because if we don't have expectations for our children, who else will? We are, as the educators, have to have those expectations to move them from point A to point B. And that's what we have to have. We have to have that empathy and that belief that they can accomplish that, that code of ethic. Next, we had maintaining a high level of professional competence and integrity and exercising professional judgment to benefit individuals with exceptionalities and their families. Everything that we do in special education does not only impact the student, but it also impacts the families. So families are very important when it comes to what we do ethically with, for the whole family. Uh, protecting and supporting the physical and psychological safety of individuals with exceptionalities. Yes, everything we do uh, impacts, we have to make sure they're physically safe and we also have to work with the psychological aspects of keeping them safe as well. And last, neither engaging or in tolerating any practice that harms individuals with exceptionalities. And next, practicing within the professional ethics, standards, and policies of the Council for Exceptional Children, upholding laws and regulations and policies that influence professional practice, and advocating improvements in the laws and regulations and policies. Basically, as a special educator, you're an ongoing advocate for change to improve the lives of students with disabilities. In the spirit of lesson study, one of the things that I've enjoyed the most is the fact that it's really all about collaboration. There are four colleagues that I work with in the School of Education who are the core team for lesson study. And we utilize the spirit of, cooperate, of collaboration, excuse me, to make sure that we were reviewing what, we, what each person was doing, giving input, which is what lesson study is all about, reviewing a lesson, talking about a lesson, looking at ways to improve the lesson so that it will get, a, get so it will be able to smoothly be relayed to the persons that you're trying to educate. So we were able to do that and we collaborated very well if I do say so myself. Now another approach we took to this was using the, uh, was using AQ and AQ is for higher education. We did training under them 
And what we did was we focused on learning different engagement strategies that were very right on, very on time for us entering lesson study because that was another layer we were able to uh, introduce. Now, I'm a storyteller. So the first thing I did, I wanted to introduce, was a bell ringer. And the bell ringer that I used to introduce my lesson study was called Puppies for Sale. And basically, it's to set the tone and open up, open up people's hearts and minds to be receptive to what you're talking about. I feel that special education is about hearts and minds. Therefore, when I teach, that's what I'm trying to get through to my students. I'm trying to get to their hearts and minds so they can understand that this is a different population from what they are, what they've even considered working with. This is a different population that needs special protections, that needs special empathy and, and understanding in order for you to connect with that child to be successful. So I use the bell ringer, which is puppies for sale. Basically, a farmer had puppies for sale. The little boy walked up to the farmer, had like 40 cents in change, and asked the farmer how much would it cost for a look. The farmer said, fine. He whistled, and all the little dogs came out of the farmhouse. And as all of them were coming out quickly, we noticed that there was one in the background that was a little small ball of fur that was moving very slowly. So by the time that little small ball of fur got to the, got to the gate, uh, to the fence, the little boy said, I want that one. And at that point, the farmer kneeled down to the little boy and basically said, no, son, you don't want that one. You know, that's the runt. It'll never be able to run and do the things that other dogs can do. And at that point, the little boy rolled up his pants leg and showed that he had a brace on his leg. And he said, I don't run so good myself. And that puppy's gonna need somebody who understands. So that's my approach to special education. It's about being someone who understands what student, or has a good idea of what the student, not only the student, but the family's going through in this process. And that's the way I teach. When I start off my intro class into special education, there was an institution called Willowbrook. And I always start off my classes with, with that because once they see that video, they understand what I'm talking about. Some things you can talk about, but it's a different thing where you can back it up and be able to, where they can actually see footage that shows them what happened behind the doors of this particular institution. That's the hook in my classroom, is getting their attention so they can understand what we're talking about. Not only understand it, but feel it. And that's what I believe in, feeling what you're talking about. Now, past the bell ringer, this lesson study three was the first one to introduce the, the usage of technology. And we did that through a program called Lesson Up. Lesson Up is an online teaching platform for educators, schools, and organizations. And with Lesson Up, you can creatively uh, have students interact with your lesson. Uh, the beauty of it is, and it's so funny, we learned about Lesson Up through, another, through a student that we were teaching when we were doing uh, presentations, and he utilized Lesson Up to do his presentation, and we all fell in love with it. So since that point in time, several students use that for their presentation. It's an interactive presentation, which means that students can, can interact with you using their cell phones, or they can interact with you using a computer, which is great on a college campus because you know students are always going to have their phones, therefore they're always able to participate in Lesson Up. So basically we use Lesson Up to be an engagement source for our students. We can ask a question or pose a scenario and they're able to take their phones or computers and respond to us in writing and then that is displayed on the screen and we're able to discuss it. Everyone gives their opinion. Quite naturally, when we started talking about ethics at the beginning of lesson study, that was one of the first questions we asked. We asked them what was their uh, definition of ethics, and they were able to share that using Lesson Up, and we were able to display that to all the members of the audience and discuss it, which was a very good way, to, good way that everybody could see if they were on the same page, you could compare notes and do things of that nature. And it's a great device if you ever want to try it. Next, going back to the AQ strategies we learned, the first one was fishbowl. And I wanted to use fishbowl, the fishbowl discussion mainly, to uh, first uh, have students select from the fishbowl a number for their group so it was, it was uh, so they, they would know where to go to partner with their group. I wasn't assigning them, it was random selection and we used fishbowl to do that. 
the next thing about Fishbowl is that it's a very empowering process because the students get together, they discuss whatever, whatever you've given them, and they move from there with uh, doing their own individual work and sharing what they, and then communicating effectively with each other about, on deeper levels, what they're getting from whatever it is you've given them. And in this instance, for, for the fishbowl activity, we basically did the selection of individuals for their groups and uh, articles and journal articles and newspaper articles that we use, but we'll talk about that a little later. Next, in addition to, to uh, fishbowl, another strategy that we were familiar with or learned from AQ is called guided notes. And this really increases student engagement during lecture and assigned readings because they're able to use the guided notes to guide their understanding and thinking through whatever it is you have them reviewing. And they are able, I use the guided, guided notes once they finish them as part of my assessment of my lesson because from reading their individual assessments on guided notes, I was able to understand whether what I was trying to convey was received and understood. So that was another assessment piece that I used, and that was the guided notes. All right, the foundation of everything that I did was with newspaper and journal articles. And I selected three newspaper and journal articles. And of course, they are uh, very provocative, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to provoke understanding from my students or disbelief to some degree with some of the things that uh, we discussed in the articles. But it, well, again, that hooked them to see that these things happen in the world, that the world is not always as, as nice as it might have been for you in college or in high school, rather, or in elementary school, that the world does have things that happen that are unfortunate to people, especially with people with disabilities who I always refer to, the, to as the least of these in our society. So the articles that I selected were titled, the first one was, Disabled Girl Suffers, Suffered Horrific Sexual Abuse, Rape on School Bus, A Suit Claims. Naturally, that's eye-opening. Next, Teacher's Awful Mistreatment of Special Needs Child. And the last one was, Lawsuit Alleges Abuse of Special Needs Through uh, uh, DHR Students, for Students with Disabilities. So how did we put all of this together? First, we started out with the, with the story that I talked about with the little boy with the puppies. Then we covered the CEC uh, codes of ethics, pre initially all 12, but focused on five. Then we went to Fishbowl. Students selected a number out of Fishbowl to know which group they were supposed to work with. Each group then had one of these articles that I just mentioned, and that group initially started out by reading the article individually, utilizing their guided notes, and then discussing as a group their response to the article. Again, going back to the assessment of my lesson, I used the guided notes. I also used the notes that students put into Lesson Up because those were visible and those were also something that I could save and review. So that gave me a good idea of where students were coming from, whether they were understanding what I was trying to get them to understand about the importance of the code of ethics for children with disabilities. Now, one of the things that we did was we utilized a, a inquiry question, and the inquiry question here was, why do we need special education, ethics and special education? In addition to that, we also did what we call a parking lot, where we had a, a tablet sitting on the table that with post-it notes, so if students had questions, rather than disturbing the whole group, they were able to write out their question and then put it in the parking lot to be addressed during question and answer. So that worked very well at, as well. Now, when I look back on everything that we did, and I hope I have surmised it to the point where you understand what we were doing, if I had to do it differently, somehow in the midst of everything, I lost track of time and I thought I had less time than I had. So I do regret that because when you have students who are, have invested in taking the time to do what you've asked them to do and then they are enthusiastically giving you information back, you want to give them the opportunity to do that unencumbered. Unfortunately, with the last group, I kind of rushed the process, so I do regret that. But also, 
and knowing what I know now about the editing process, that really would not have been an issue because if I had gone over, that could have been edited out. So one of the things I would do the next time I do the lesson study is to make sure that uh, I'm very cognizant of the time. Now we're fortunate to have uh, a participant observer and a uh, person who had a background who was able to give us feedback. And uh, they were able to remind me of the importance of uh, not interrupting or shortening students' uh, responses. And so that's something that I would do differently. I'm very excited about the fact that in, during this process, my students were very involved in the preparation for some of this. Therefore, they got to see their teacher as a person. They got to see their teacher with a little nervous tension. They were able to see the human side, which they see all the time, but even more so in this particular situation, of their teacher. And that was good because we were basically all in this together. So I want to com commend my students who participated in this lesson study. They were excellent. They did exactly what I asked them to do. And they really got involved with the content and really gave everything back to me that I wanted to see from them. And at the end, we went back to lesson study and we answered the question. And the question was, why do we have ethics in education? Again, using Lesson Up, they were able to put that information onto the platform and we were able to discuss it. All in all, I think my lesson was a good one. I think I'm very pleased with the fact that when you go back and you use assessment, my assessment tools gave me the same information which indicated that my students understood what was being asked of them and they were able to give the information back. So I'm very pleased with what we did and I look forward to uh, continuing to use parts of this model with my students in future classes and in future lessons. So again, I'm very pleased with what we did. I did learn something and that was looking at time and looking at what's more important. Is it more important to have more time or less time? Or is it more important to give the students the time that they need to express themselves and share what they've learned from your lesson? Thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I look forward to possibly having another opportunity to share more with you. Thank you.